Hi, this is Damon Pistolka, host of The Faces of Business, where I talk with interesting people sharing life and business experiences to entertain, engage, build community, and provide information to help others succeed. If you're interested in learning more about one of our guests or how we are helping business owners generate wealth and build businesses they can sell or succeed at Exit Your Way, you can find more information on our website, ExitYourWay.com, or by contacting me directly, Damon, at ExitYourWay.com. I hope you enjoy the show. All right, everyone, welcome once again to the Faces of Business. I'm your host, Damon Pistolka, and with me today, I have Brian Trendler from Laugh Tech, and we're going to be talking about bringing humor into business. Indeed. Brian, welcome, my friend. Thank you. Good to see you, Damon. It's been way too long, man. <laughs> yeah, it has. Yeah, it has. It really has. It's, it's been it's been too long, and we're going to make sure that that's not the case any longer. Amen so, to that. Man, I am excited to have you on today <laughs> for a lot of different reasons. We were laughing yeah. already when we started. Too uh, much, actually. But uh, so I'm just going to run through a couple things. All right. You you have a couple companies. You got a few companies actually. You got Laugh Tech. We'll talk about that a bit. You got yep. Professional yep. Networking Association Northwest. Sir. You just said you've got 10, 10 chapters spread around the Northwest, networking, yep. people, yep. you know, helping each other build, rise, rise together. I think that's awesome. Yep. Uh, how long have you had that? I, I didn't even really, I didn't. Well, know. yeah. So, I mean, you haven't gotten my third company yet, but that's fine. No, we um, will. We're getting to that one. Okay. All right. Well, let's, let's talk about PNA North Northwest first. I actually was left this little weird membership from an intern who bailed on me back in 2010. And okay. I, 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 I went to this meeting at that point, it was just called PNA and it was at yeah. the Guineas, uh, you know, that used to be off Baltimore highway. Now they've since knocked it down and it's a Chick-fil-A with like, you know, uh, you know 20 <laughs> yeah, lines around it worth of uh, traffic just to go get a freaking yeah. chicken burger. Yeah. Um, but I, I walked into this little tiny group, had about 20 members and you talk about drinking the Kool-Aid brother. It was yeah. They were kind, they were positive, they were informative, they had fun, it was fast paced. I was also part of another chapter that that starts with B and ends with an NI. Um, really? Yeah, so I was part of one of those groups at that point um, that are run very totalitarian and cruel and evil yeah. and frustrating. And even though they serve a purpose, I was already kind of on my way out from that organization. Yeah. And I fell in love with PNA. So I've been a member since 2010 and right smack in the middle of COVID, uh, right in the middle of, of the meat and potatoes, I actually yeah. purchased the company. So I, I, I cool. took over. The then owner uh, went off to do other great things. And it's been my baby ever since. And I, I used the pandemic to bunker, to hunker down and rework the entire thing, change out the model to an extent. I like to think, make it, make it better. Um, I'm already yeah. a designer, as you know, and you haven't mentioned yet, but I had, I had already been doing all that stuff behind yeah. the scenes for five, six years. So I already had all the digital assets. So once I rebirthed p and into Pacific, into p and Northwest, just a crafty way of saying that accounting is gone. <laughs> this is yeah. the new accounting. Yeah. Rebirthed it as a, as a, uh, as a new company. Then we just, it was like, it just grew like wildfire right in the middle of the pandemic. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. We got we've got Deb here. Thanks for stopping yeah. by, Deb. Uh, Deb is a, a Midwestern person. <laughs> she's a Midwestern person because I think I think she lives. I, yeah, she's at Chick Fil A every week. So that's, I just had to put that drive through lines are serious business. They're right because you know, like they're very live, polite too, like creepy. Yeah, polite, like yeah. axe murderer level polite. Yeah, um, I actually love. Mo okay, I admit. The one in Kirkland, every time I go to my print shop to pick up stuff for a client, I stop by the Chick-fil-A. So there you, go. there you go. On your show, I just I just let it out there. The secret's out of the bag. It's their waffle fries, man. Yeah. I, that, that's it. And I'm, I'm assuming you can relate to that. So yeah. There we yep. go. Oh, she said, go Bucks. Okay. <laughs> There we go. But we, uh, you. you know, we, we, so we saw, I think the first time I saw Chick fil A was still when I lived in the Southeast. And, oh, okay. you know, yeah. and it's, uh, it is a, it is a good, good food, but the lines are horrible. I just call it out. They're horrible. They're ridiculous. 
Yeah. And but anyway, enough with Chick Fil A. Let's talk a little bit more about the networking. And I think I think that's you know from from a networking standpoint, PNA Northwest, it 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 probably wasn't a bad thing for that company to the COVID COVID happening because people have more time to network like that. Yeah. Yeah. I actually pulled the entire, at that point, then uh, four groups um, uh-huh. out from all of the brick and mortar locations a month before Jay Inslee did, did that for all of us. Right. Okay. So I kind of got a, a couple of hints, a few connections in the men, the uh, military VA, you know, facilities across the country. I, I was hearing some things that were scaring me a little bit more than the average Joe or Jane. Mm-hmm. So I, I made that decision and it was the best thing that could have been, could have happened because what did happen is people started using PNA as a source to literally just be seen and heard. It stopped being about business for the longest time. I'd say for the first six to eight months of the really of, of the center of the pandemic, yeah. people were using it as a chance to be seen, connect, cry a little, get frustrated a little bit. We yeah. still had the meeting. We still ran the format the way we always did. We still, between at that point, again, four chapters, exchange uh, just shy of $650,000, almost $700,000 between the members, which, uh, which is phenomenal. But then mm-hmm. I decided, okay, I'm going to grow this. And then that was like lighting the Mission Impossible wick back in the old TV show. Yeah. Then chapters just started coming to me. I had people coming to me saying, I want to start a group. You know, I've got six to eight people ready to go. Let's do this. And that's where we, at our high point, we had we had 11 chapters. And recently I've just find, I finessed it a little bit and brought it back down to 10 because I've got goals for the organization. Make sure everyone is at 15 members minimum. So people can really connect, earn business, earn referrals, yeah. but still do the standards, you know, passing referrals, giving commercials, a target speaker, things along those lines. But, you know, we differ a little bit, but I would, you know, people can come visit chapters to experience what differentiates us from all those other <clears throat> network groups out there. Yeah. Yeah. So we Better will, I, I, I didn't, I didn't do it yet, but I will put your, your uh, PNA Northwest link oh, sure. in the, in the post. Appreciate so you got that. Um, I'll do that right now because if I don't write it down, I'll never remember it. And then, then it's only fifty percent good if I write it down. So <laughs> no, I, I I try to make it easy. Pnaw.com. Okay, very good. So pnaw.com. So then we get to your graphic design company because I yes. think the name is awesome. So tell us the name of your graphic design company. It's called We Fix Ugly Design, uh, and I I'm actually a a uh, educated designer, which means. Back in 1994 or so, I spent way too much at a local institution, Cornish College of the Arts. Um, I was the only one in my class that even had my own computer. So that just dated me a bit. Um, But I I had the Bachelor of Fine Arts in graphic design and illustration. And of course, no one in the real world ever asked me for proof. No one, I've I've never shown anyone my diploma. (laughs) It it earned me the right to say I spent too much money to get a degree that I could have done just out there working the street. Um, but yeah, I've, I, I've been a graphic designer for over, over 30 years. Um, love it. Uh, it, it's still my primary income, right? Cause we all have yeah. to keep roofs over our head and whatnot. And it's just, it's, I, it's just a joy, man, working with companies, especially beginning like brand new companies, entrepreneurs that are excited, but they don't know what they're doing. Right. They really don't. They're pushing money into buckets and really flushing it. A lot of times they're yeah. not working with intelligent design, intelligent marketing plans, campaigns, graphic design, promotional products. They're putting it in all the wrong places. So I've just been slowly fixing ugly one client at a time for many, many years now. Yeah. I thought it was funny because I saw on your website for the, for we fix ugly design uh, that if you don't, if you get offended by our name, you probably shouldn't work with us. Yeah, that was so, so appropriate. Yeah. Man. It's so great. I- all of these things point toward the end of company, which is which is behind me because I'm I can't keep a straight face, brother. I've I've tried, and yeah. whether I've been through corporate America, because I'm sure you'll dive into my dirty past, um, or or any of these previous jobs, I I'm I'm a, I'm not a wisecracker, right? But I I've always used humor as a skill set to excel me in business in one way, shape, or form. And um, it's been very interesting because it's always gotten me into some form of external job not that they want to get me out of the office right because hr is complaining but you know they've always put me in a customer facing position because when you get someone to laugh or cry they buy it's yeah. that simple period I'll, yeah. I'll i'll fight blood tooth and nail to anybody who wants to argue me about that 
It's just get them in a position where they're laughing, they're enjoying themselves. You disarm them. You put them as a person first and opportunity second. And that, yeah. of course, lends itself into the other thing you might be mentioning. That yeah, we might fine. mention that here in a moment. But yeah. I, I like Deb says she liked that. Slowly fixing ugly. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it takes a while. Yeah. yeah, it takes a while. Sometimes it does. But yeah, so. Today we're going to be talking about bringing humor in business. So let's get to your your the company that we're going to discuss today, Laugh Tech. Yeah, so, you know, you you've gone through these corporate jobs. You, mm-hmm. you just like, man, I am over it. I have to form Laugh Tech. What? So first of all, tell us what Laugh Tech, what you do at Laugh Tech, and then what the heck, you know, what was the the sure. the thing that got you going on that? So. I always tell people I'll make a long story short. And then, you know, 45 minutes later, um, I have been a, a lifelong Toastmaster fan. Um, when I was yep. working at Boeing a lifetime ago, uh, two of my close friends slash, you know, co-workers twisted my arm, literally twisted my arm, put my arm in, in the uh, backward p- position and said, come with us. We're going to a Toastmaster group. I had no idea what it was. Yeah. I was also going through a bit of a dark time in, 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 my, in my personal life. Yeah. So the idea of public speaking in any capacity was above spiders or death for that, you know, one moment. And I fell in love with Toastmasters. Now they are an amazing organization. They're international for a reason. I've been a 20 some odd year, year member. I'm not currently, but I owe any amount of my success. Hi, Joseph, uh, to, to what I learned from Toastmasters from the initial structure of how to write a speech. Right. So when I got that under my wing, and I started to dive back into corporate America between the Boeing job, the Microsoft job, the AT&T job when the sky was supposed to fall. And we were calling literally remote offices in AT&T to get people to update their CMOS, you know, chips on, on, on their computers. We're calling them and we're messing with them, Dan. And we're calling them going, you're going to die, click. And then we would just wait and just wait for the phone to ring again. And that'd be that location calling, you know, what's going on? You know, this is this is 1999. Um Humor is always an integral part. And when I met my business partner, I was the keynote speaker at a fall conference for Toastmasters. I was on stage doing an improvisational series. And she was the first person that was one of the victims. I'm sorry, one of the volunteers to do one of the improv exercises. And when inside the Linwood Convention Center, okay, so inside to do to imitate a golf swing, the first thing she did was this. She tested the wind. And it slayed everybody. Everyone's laughing because they're like, we're inside a building, right? And then Damon, she imitates a swing. Now, I'll never forget this. 300 heads went like this. Watching this invisible, not even there ball go that direction. And I was like, I've totally got to start something with this gal. And a couple months later, we were sharing an office downtown Bothell. And Laugh Tech was literally born from us meeting on a Toastmasters stage because we both have a unique way of addressing humor. Marcel Allen comes from, honestly, a place of pain. She hadn't laughed for months prior to meeting me because she lost someone important in her life. I had ironically just lost my mother after a six-year battle of cancer. We were both in a weird place. Yeah. But I was always using humor as a tool to get people like you to laugh and hopefully your audience and people in front of me or around me, whatever. She was using you know, a, a pain as a, well, as laughter as a recovery method. Right. So we had a very interesting yin to each other's yang. And that's kind of where Laugh Tech came from, to get people to become better speakers, more confident speakers, whether it's in this type of scenario, a one to one or a one to many. Like we like we enjoy calling it amazing to, to many. Yeah. Or just adulting. Right. Become a better adult. Adult better. Adulting is hard enough. You know, can you come? Yeah. It's when your significant other asks you a question. Can you take curveball questions? You know, what happens when any speaker you've ever seen loses it? They lose it when they say, is there any questions, right? Because they're not trained to be able to take on the resiliency of those random questions from left field that hit them. They don't know how to react. So we don't teach people how to become comedians in any capacity, just competent and confident public speakers. And that can be on the phone if they're just a phone jockey. If they're doing video and they want things to be seen and heard and listened to, three completely separate things. And we have the methods that we teach from, the six methods of humor where we take people through our methodologies of taking what you, Damon, already do great and make it amazing. You know, not going to lie. Love to have you as a client. You're a funny guy. But are you extremely structured? 
Do you do improv? Nope. Do you riff? You know, what is your method and how can we make that fantastic, right? Anybody technically could be our client it's, if they're coachable and want to improve, right? Mm -hmm. And they better have fun doing it. People have so yeah. much fun <laughs> doing any yeah. of this. Yeah. I'm a closet rapper, but that's... Are you really? Yeah, I'm a closet rapper. <laughs> yo, yo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's um, close. <laughs> so good well we got a few more not rap just for the you know i i yeah. keep it under wraps <laughs> yeah yeah so we got mike stopping by thanks and uh i can't i can't pronounce your first name but thanks for being here today shabhankar shabhankar thanks Shabhankar. for coming man and yeah thanks man i'm just taking notes over here look look at this competent and confident i love yeah that. i know she's doing it thanks Jeff. yeah well, so so we're talking about bringing humor into business, and then you, yeah. then you throw this 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 curveball at me, but I'm ready for it. <laughs> I'm ready for it, you know, because you're talking about making people great public speakers, and I, yeah. you know, and and so you you talk about people in business not laughing, and let's get serious for a moment because this is something yeah. that that I I think is well, it sucks. Right. It, just, it sucks. It sucks that business has gotten sterilized to the point that we are expected not to laugh at anything. Yeah. Because out of fear to offend. Yeah, we're fear to offend. Yeah. So what the hell do we do? It's a it's a great question. We get that question a lot. Um we have a series of workshops, for lack of better words, that we can take virtually or physically into into businesses of any size, shape or, you know, location or matter, you know, like yeah. category industry because of this exact problem, especially with the amount of anxiety and hesitation people have because of the world that we live in when we were like this for two and a half years, right? Yeah. You're wearing masks. In fact, we had a whole workshop of how to talk through your mask and get your eyebrows and your ears and your eyes to do the talking for you, right? Because some people, they look like they're dead. When yeah. this was across the road. Are you breathing? If yeah. the mask wasn't moving, you would know. Hey I would get mad at people in the grocery store because I was walking around with my, with my mask on it. I'm a nice guy. At least I'd like to think I am. I walk by somebody, male, female, non-binary, doesn't yeah. matter what shape or size or whatever. I would smile. Yeah. And but but they couldn't see me. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh my god, 10 feet away. I'm like, that son of a didn't even smile at me. And then I was like, wait a minute, I can't see their face either. Like, I mean, like these types of things have been making people crazy for close to three years now. So yeah. imagine now that people are coming out of the woodwork, they're finally coming back to the office on a limited scale or their own, you know, death by um, uh, uh, death by Zoom type of uh, uh, meetings are killing the motivation of the teammates. You know, we come in and we teach some resiliency techniques, improvisational exercise to get people honestly just to lighten up and loosen up. And we work with the management in the room. We work with HR in the room. We have people swear in a Bible, <laughs> literally a Laugh Tech Bible that says whatever happens in, in Laugh Tech stays in Laugh Tech. It will not affect my quarterly review. And you know, <laughs> HR laughs and the management laughs. But then we have them do the rant and the rave exercise where you pick something that pisses you off about the company. It could be Joe sitting right next to you. It could be Mary in HR. It could be the secretary who falls asleep on the phone. And they rant about that person for a minute and a half or that process or that thing or that widget or that crappy sale that they just made to someone who they don't like, whatever the case is. And then the whole group does this simultaneously. Snap your fingers right now. Everyone snaps their finger and they go right into a rave. So if they're talking negative and frustrated and irritated about something going on in, at that office, in the infrastructure, within the atmosphere of the company, and then they go positive and they go rave, then suddenly they're saying, you know, even though Mary frustrates me on a regular basis, and I'm sorry for anyone out there named, named Mary, I'll say John Smith. But point is, even though that they just battered John Smith for like 90 seconds, then they turn around and say, you know what, John Smith, he's the first one to come to the office every day. He's the last one to leave. He's the most positive person on the phone with everyone he's dealing with because he deals with my crap. So I can out there, I can be out there being a salesperson. I'm sorry I have to deal with John's crap all the time because he's too busy. So I'm just ranting because I need to get off my chest. And suddenly John feels like a million bucks. He's been vindicated. The person who just ranted and raved goes through an entire physiological and psychological experience when they do that. Their heart rate accelerates, their brain releases adrenaline, and then endorphins. Everybody goes, oh, that's so nice. He ranted and raved. But guess what else? 
management in the background is going, oh, snap. <laughs> they they learn things about their organization. You can't learn in any, fill out the survey and send to HR, right? They bring yeah. us in. We bring that out in people and everything is cathartic. Everything becomes a solution because we have ongoing accountability trainings and workshops that we can do with them after the fact, after we expose all of these things, right? Yeah. Wow. And a lot of that has to do with humor. Well, finally, yeah. finally, getting back to your, your, your question. No, I'm sorry, but no, no, no. It's it, important it, it, and it, it can be a great, tool. great, great, great example of how you're using humor as, as a, as a, a way. And the, the way you, you rant and rave, that is really something because you can't use that without giving me a quarter every single time. Nah, yeah, I got the quarters. I got them all stacked <laughs> up back here. So, so the, the, God, that just, that's it. That, that was quite incredible it's, there. It's quite crazy. incredible because, because two, two things happen right there too. When someone does that, get it off their chest and everybody else in the room that has that same thing goes, Oh, they're right. They're right. They're not, might not be saying it, but they're thinking it. Yep. And then, so they kind of get it off their chest too, but they're not saying it, but someone else said something about it. Damon always steals the donuts in the, in the, <laughs> in the break room. You know, that some of a gun, man. Yeah, he just he takes a last donut every week. Yeah. First one to take six, you know, whatever it is. And uh, but then then they all get to talk about the good parts about Damon. Yeah. Companies learn so much about each other. And then even if we do one of the other improv exercises, simply called curveball. Um, you've you've heard me talk about it when we used to go to that one network. Yeah. Eight yeah. Ago. yeah. You literally take random words, toss it at the person, and they have to speak about it. They have to take the word goldfish and suddenly start saying, I used to have a goldfish. I was six years old. The goldfish was named Fluffy. I don't know why it was called Fluffy. It was a goldfish. It was wet. And then another word is thrown at them and they work that into what they're talking about. Or if they need to, they stop and sit and segment off. But guess what? If you're at a company that sells widgets and they bring us in because their sales team are a little bit depressed, the atmosphere isn't phenomenal, and they need to train their sales force to become better, more resilient, um, more positive. I mean, like even yeah. just positivity, right? Well, we do curveball that's tailored toward that widget. And suddenly we're throwing out words like, I don't, I don't know, flux capacitor and steel plates and whatever. And if everyone that does the demonstration or does the improv exercise, if they have different answers, management's like, oh, my God, no one knows how to sell our product. Yes. Right. And then we go in and work with them on the message. We work, we work with them on sales scripts, phone scripts, Zoom scripts, face to face scripts. We role play. We do all that stuff to get everyone on the same page. And then guess what happens? People like their job. Yeah. They stop calling in sick. The companies actually probably end up saving money because people want to go to work and they want to be engaged and they want to have fun at that next meeting because they know either we're going to be there to do a quick improv or guess what? They don't need us now because they've learned those techniques. They do it themselves. They open the meeting with it. Yeah. And yeah, then it was happy. And and look, it, it just had Andrew Lavoy on last week, who's a, a recruiter for manufacturing companies in the in the northeast mm -hmm. or south southeast, northeast, whatever if you're Canada or the US. But yeah. Yeah. um he's he was talking about the turnover at different levels in the companies and how it's just killing companies if they if they're if they're not really paying attention to yeah. entry level turnover yeah. or mid level turnover and and the importance of exit interviews talking to employees and you're just you're oh you're exposing yeah. a different way to really bring out some of these things that people are feeling or or should be talked about yeah, yeah. and and I, I just got to put this this one comment up here on Timo I think oh, I'm sorry. T T Timo, yeah, lots Timo. of people to show a poker face to not show any weakness, assuming that admitting to tap human feelings is a sign of weakness. Timo, I love that. Yeah, You're, he's he's absolutely spot on. We are trained to to be non-reactive. Yeah, and that's honestly it's shameful. Other countries don't do that with their workers. Okay, unless yeah. you're China, but I, I mean, yeah. it's, it's it's remarkable how our own ability to have freedom of speech, um, allow self deprecate I'm a self-deprecator king, okay? This face was made for radio, <laughs> not Zoom, not LinkedIn live stuff, whatever, okay? Um, you know, to, to have people silenced because they're worried about the person who told the joke even is going to be offended by his or her or their reaction. This is a weird, polarized, yeah. super sensitive 
world that we're in now. And and and, and Deb, I I, I love you. I I'm yeah. I, I've seen people react that way. I've seen tears in their eyes. Um, so sorry it's happened to you. It just it just breaks my heart. Um, we can teach folks to use humor as a skill to again disarm one another. Yeah. Not use it. I mean, again, I was bullied as a kid. Okay, I rose up from that when I realized I was the guy that after being bullied, I'd look at someone to pretend it's you, Damon, Mr. Mr. Bully. I would immediately in a couple seconds, look at you, find something I didn't like about you, realize that maybe other people may have seen it as well. And then I would cut you off of the knees, brother, because I could verbally throw that back. And then all of a sudden everyone's pointing at you and laughing at you. And that's when I dropped the truth bomb smoke and I ran off in, in, into the corner. But guess what? Who was the bully in that scenario? I became the bully. Yeah. So I realized years and years and years later, after a, a friend of mine, who's thank God is still my friend, told me after we reconnected years after after high school, he was like, "Dude, like, because because we were replaying one of those one of those situations," and he was like, "You were an a hole." And I was like, <laughs> "I, was, I, I it, it stunned me." Yeah. I was like, wait a minute. Why? I was the one, and he's like, "No, no, no, no." He just said something about, I don't know, your backpack or whatever. Yeah. You sliced and diced him, man. That's when I realized that words hurt. Yeah. I say that to my nine and 11 year old all the time because they yeah. turn around and they snark. And, and occasionally you can see those teeth sink in to yeah. you know her brother or his sister. And you can see the reaction. You can see the pain in their eyes when the sting is left and the power of those words remain yeah so we teach adults that too because guess what nowadays don't get me started on kids oh you know we're not present enough for our children it's it's no yeah. wonder half of those things are happening not <laughs> that's another interview let's talk about that but it's just remarkable yeah. humor heals we started that hashtag it does years humor ago. Heals. Awesome. anyone can look that up hashtag humor heals and see so many things that we've tried to attribute toward the positivity of that um, cause it's yeah. remarkable. We, we did it with boys and girls clubs over the pandemic. These kids, they are already, they're, they're there because home is not always a safe alternative. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And they just wanted to be seen and heard and cared about and given an opportunity to speak. And it was brilliant working with these kids. The same stuff we do, uh, same adult level trainings. We just did for the kids. We just moved a couple words around. Right. Yeah. We just added like every other word, you know, <laughs> to make it kid friendly. <gasps> oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, you know, it's, it's, uh, yeah. The, the thing I think for me anyway, that really has, has been a, a, a game changer mm -hmm. for my life in COVID and, and just the years, not COVID itself. Cause yeah, that's all shit. It's, it's, a hell of a time right yeah. uh, for a lot of reasons but when you look at some of the things that did bring out in the positive things that it bring out because the time you talk about your kids mm -hmm. we had time with our kids that i never would have had ever ever remarkable you know and even even the pain in it, and I, i'm not going to say this the right way the pain in the butt it is if you are working at home your kids are trying to homeschool and you're trying, it's just a pain in the butt, right? Cause just the, the, the core. And I, and I feel for people doing that because it's, it's, it's a son of a gun. Well, I had, I had, you know, two kids here, one in college, one working in, and, and me working in my office. And it's, it's like, it's, it's not good, but that time, that time you talk about not spending enough time with our kids. If yeah. yes, they fell behind in school. Yes. That but you just a whole bunch of bad stuff. Isn't but, that crazy though? Because we're selfishly glad that we got to reclaim that time with our children. My kids yeah. are two years behind, mainly because they had me trying to help them with the new math. <laughs> yeah, the new math. Let's go even go there. Math, man, it's go there. steps to do five minus two. Mm -hmm. you know, and even then, I'm like, wait a minute, I'm on a I'm on a train leaving Baltimore, going 45 miles an hour. How did I get there? Yeah. You know. Yeah. Ah. Oh, but absolutely. it brought it brought humanity into business. I think a bit more. Oh, I love that. I'm going to use. Because, Good. because listen, we, we, we allowed people into our homes yeah. like we never have before kids coming up in a meeting 
and and asking mom or dad for something yeah. is common. We're used to it. We're used to that. Even talk about curveball. That's a good one. I bet there were some wicked curveballs. <laughs> oh, between 10 P and H afters or then 11, I saw some crazy stuff. Yeah. No. Yeah. You know, because yeah, kids are kids are t- t- home's yeah. home. But, oh, it but wasn't uh, even kids half the time. Are you kidding me? Yeah. It's like the creepy clown on the back shelf that the eyes follow you no matter where you yeah. are. I mean, <laughs> yeah. it, was, it was really bad. <laughs> <laughs> But but you know that there's some good things came out of it, and and when you come back and you you think about the 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 uh, how that is going to change the way that we do business going forward, because you know, COVID was polarizing, criminy. I mean, so many things because we were all balled up and tense about so yeah. many things. But I also think that the it it brought some humanity into business that will allow us to use laughter like you're teaching people mm-hmm. and 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 just by communicating with others now to to really be better than we were before. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's been amazing to see again back to the humor heels or or, or just the yeah. healing power of laughter. Um, what it's done for companies, even through one or two interactions. Yeah. Uh, oddly enough, for some reason, we've fallen into a skill set of working with accountants. You talk about a bunch of pent up people, right? Not just during tax time. These people are like a one step away from ending up on the news. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> remarkable, though, the energy and the love they have, believe it or not, for their oh, yeah. job. Oh, yeah. For, for oh, numbers. Yeah. Now, I think that's sick of the head, right? Because yeah. I know where my weaknesses are, you know. Yeah. But these are people that just, I mean, they just want to improve their own intake process when they're trying to hire college, you know, like just fresh out of college, green people who are hungry to get in that world. These are people who, like you mentioned, want to improve exit interviews, um, preferably intake only. Yeah. But then also build in things throughout the infrastructure, even in a Zoom based world, um, to keep people happy, to keep them engaged, to have accountability sessions where once a month, even they're talking about failures and applauding each other and talking about successes and applauding each other. Name drops. I'm sorry, not name drops, number drops. Why don't we talk numbers in business? It seems like you have to be a certain echelon or a certain size business to talk about the million dollar gig you did here and there. Why aren't smaller businesses succeeding or I should say finding success and joy and sharing with others that, oh, my God, I just closed a thirty five hundred dollar opportunity four hour gig down the street. I'm so stoked. Why is that held against people? Why can't everybody use the smile that's planted on their face or should be or can be the smile that's reflected in in their eyes and show that person joy and kindness? We teach that stuff, too. This isn't difficult, but no one's ever done it before, which is why we don't have any competition. Yeah. Right. Just get people that, like like I said, adult better. Yeah. It's hard. (laughs) Adulting is hard. Adulting is is hard. hard. I don't tell you. It's hard. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, it's and, crazy. And the more you learn about it, the more you realize how far you got to go. Yeah, <laughs> I don't want to be, a, be yeah. anymore. Yeah. So when we when we talk about when we talk about some of the the most boring places you've worked, <laughs> I you had to ask this question. My, my old corporate jobs. Yeah. Well, you know, I think. I don't think boring is really the right. No, okay, so, so I don't so want to steal dry. your thunder. Dry, I don't want to dry, offend dry, anybody. Dry. No, we're not offending anybody, but yeah. Um. So okay, so <laughs> I <laughs> like everyone else in the Pacific Northwest. After I left college with my graphic design degree, I went to go work at the closest available shop, which was a bagel house up the street, and you know worked twelve a.m. to six a.m. and yes. made three thousand bagels a night. Or a morning, depending on how you care to look at my pain. Um, yeah. when, when I when I I moved on to Computer City, do you remember Computer City? Oh was, wow! Yes. Owned by Tandy. Yes, yeah. I opened the Linwood branch, and it was very exciting in my black pants and my yellow shirt. I looked, I looked like a bumblebee in heat. Um, <laughs> we were literally drilling it into people how this brand new Windows ninety five computer with a forty megabyte hard drive would be enough, ma'am or sir, to yeah. you know run your Windows up. No, your uh, you know uh, Word and Excel, yeah. which was pretty much yeah. all they had at that point. Yeah. Um. Afterwards, I moved on to corporate jobs. 
But keep in mind, I had my graphic design company going. So I always had a day job to support my design habit. I'd go home and work eight hours after a day job. And those consisted of a Cisco IT reseller job, which, 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 which was great. And it was profitable. But I had to ask someone permission to go use the restroom. And I had, to, and I, I had had. Oh my! Yeah, and I, I, I had, you know, um, uh, vacation time denied because the person yeah. who had been there a week ahead of me got it approved. So then I got screwed. All of those things started to pepper down and destroy my soul. So what did I do? <laughs> I, I, I decided I'll go one step further. I'll go work for Microsoft. Now I, I was a V dash, so I was part of the Volt team. Great bunch of people. But yeah. you talk about a stressed out wackadoo job at that point right in the middle of the um oh geez i was part of the msdn the microsoft developers network group dealing with fortune mm-hmm. 5000 companies in you know uh, uh, all of california where all the linux penguin lovers were so i was trying to be humorous and have fun with my scripts and i was constantly getting beat down but i wasn't reading this dry pos off yeah. the screen when my Siebel account registered and showed the amount of income I was driving in and free resources. We were, you know, <laughs> like shooting a helicopter over um, Silicon Valley and just dropping crates of non penguin lovers material, all windows stuff yeah. and MSDN accounts, all of that stuff. The proof was my scripts were working. Their scripts were garbage um, that carried over to Boeing, you know, and, um, working with engineer after engineer, after engineer, after engineer and death by PowerPoint and my simple suggestions to just add a slide of a cat face, you know, whatever, every couple of slides drop in something, you know, get people to smile. No, yeah. that didn't work out very well. So <laughs> the, that contract job ended quickly. The, and, no, you know, no cat faces in the F-22 no, presentation. No cat faces. Um, we, we did recommend at one time during a laugh tech training that a Boeing employee at that time were to, um, work. we suggested he make up an acronym. Boeing loves their acronyms. They love yes. their abbreviations. They love anything yes. that they can say is S W O T or whatever. Yeah. We recommended he create an acronym. I don't remember what it was, but he kept referencing it one time during a presentation and he kept like, let's just say it was the, it was the DOG. So he's, he's like, and, you know, in referencing the DOG, we took this number and this participle and blah, 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 blah. Well, he didn't realize that bigwigs were in the back of the room. So as he's giving this presentation, bigwigs are, are like, what the heck? What, what's it? What's the DOG? And, and they're raising this up the pipeline of, of what did I miss during that one memo? And as it turns out, at the end of the presentation, he literally said, and by the way, for those of you paying very close attention, I noticed there's some, some chatter in the back of the room. DOG doesn't exist. This is something I put in there to make sure I was maintaining your attention during my presentation on this Mars lunar rover, you know, piece. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, he he got a call a while later (laughs) um, and thankfully he was he was thanked for the humor, thanked for the frustrations that were caused. But guess what, man? Levity. Levity works in any situation. So we will teach it as long as no one is against me if you get fired. (laughs) Yeah. So somewhere, so when you, when you look at some of the time where, where people have used this, what are some of the, some of the most just coolest positive things you've seen happen? As far as folks who have actually like gone through our training, gone through your training and it just, it just something really clicked. You know what? This is going to be the cheesiest answer ever, man. We, we teach all age groups. Yeah. And uh, I think about four years ago now we taught, a young girl who showed up with her mom, uh, Rayanne Hall and her daughter had become great friends of mine. She actually just brought me in to be an auctioneer and MC at one of her events. She owns now networking for women, phenomenal organization for grants for, for girls to get them on track. Brilliant organization. So put that in the chat window, right? Yeah. Um, her daughter was eight or nine at that point. And this little girl was, I think, terrified to do this with her mom. But going through our six weeks, I'm sorry, our, our six methods of humor to discover your mixed workshop, she showed up every every night with her mom for two hours. <laughs> and she was the best student we've ever had. 
Because you know how they say out of mouths of babes, right? You know, mm-hmm. they, have, they have no filter. Um, no, yeah. A lot, a lot like you and a lot like me. But she had one gesture the whole time. She was like a nutcracker type military soldier. This is what she just this adorable little girl. Just, I just want to this and this and talk about this and so on and so on. And she was just hilarious. But she came out of her shell on an epic scale. And I haven't seen her since. Until four or five weeks ago, I just did that auctioneer event, like I, yeah. I mentioned. And I got to see this beautiful young girl come up to me, give me a huge hug. And it took me a second. I was like, oh, my God, it's you. Right? Yeah. So this transformation, we only like this much we'll take credit for, right? Yeah. It's a better story if I say everything she's done good since then is because of Laugh Tech. Exactly. But like just those types of things just hit me in the feels, you know? Yeah. I mean, yes, we've gotten people to go through our our sessions and turn around and you know get a get a get a cruise line gig, or then go off and give a presentation at a huge event in Arizona and be voted the best speaker. That stuff warms my heart to the core. But because I'm a dad and I'm a sucker and a huge Nancy and I cried a moment's notice talking about how much I love my children, right? Anything oh, yeah. we can do with kids, man, just kills me. Yeah, just it just turns me into complete goose butter because they're amazing. Yeah, and especially with what's happened. And now thankfully my kids are in school face to face. Yeah. Seeing how they're still kind of suffering just, just gets me going and gets me to still want to do as much as I can for anyone out there who'll give laugh tech a chance, much yeah. less any time that we can touch children's lives. Yeah. Yeah. This is awesome, man. It, it's so good <laughs> talking to you. Cause I mean, like, Hey, I, I'll cry to notice when I start talking about kids. Yeah, just because you know they're just, they're they are the future, and we gotta we gotta do what we can to get them on the in the best paths possible. And um, this has been tough. That, but I do have to say too, a couple things that I really noticed when I see kids around town playing, they don't care about mass. It's so awesome when you see them just out there rolling and rolling down the street in a scooter yeah. in, a, in a mask when they had to wear a mask, and it was like eh, no big deal. I just got this thing on my face. It's like wearing a helmet on a bike. Yeah. Yeah, they most most got used to it quick enough yeah. that it stopped being a burden. Um, but still, there's the uh, damage has been done, and and yeah. this generation is something that I think is going to be used as guinea pigs and tests and finger points for, <laughs> for many many years. Um, yeah. I, I just hope that everyone out there, from the scientists on to the government officials, etc., have learned something from this cluster frick. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, those of us who have survived, and that's not meant to sound you know cruel. Yeah. Um, yeah. from a business perspective or even a mentality or mental perspective, we're still here and we still have needs and there's still people that need to be seen yeah. and frankly hugged and then maybe, ba- you know, back team and sterilize them. Um, yeah. Just, you know, we're all going to be okay. Yeah. And that's part yeah. of what we also address. I mean, during these angst ridden sessions, yes. there's, there's a lot of anxiety out there, but the yeah. power of the smile, eye contact, stuff like that. It goes mm-hmm. really, really far. And, and Deb, by the way, yes, we we, we, we should talk. <laughs> she just put a note in there. Um, <laughs> Good. My, my comments quit rolling for some reason, but we'll get talk. that. Yeah. It's, you know, they, they cut me off once in a while. <laughs> you crossed the line, David. I crossed the line. <laughs> crossed the line again. Uh, here he is going again. So, yeah. Do you have any live events set up? Um, we're in the process right now of doing one of our, so, so we're about midway through one of our seven week courses. Okay. Uh, we do those on a regular basis, but you know, honestly, the biggest thing that we love doing is called a laugh and learn. Um, yeah. sounds silly, but customers for 500 bucks, they bring us in for 90 minutes. Ideally they put some food yeah. in our, in, in our cake holes cause it's a yeah. lunch and learn, yeah. but we, we turn around and teach them one or two of our little practices or methods from an improv yeah. standpoint. We'll work with the company, of course, ahead of time to make sure it's tailored toward what the needs are. Yeah. But we'll travel anywhere for that because it's a lot of fun. Oh, I mean. And, um, you know, obviously it's kind of a foot in the door opportunity yeah. as well. But yeah. um, those are the majority of the live things we're doing. Um, honestly, I've been really busy, <clears throat> excuse me, with MC and auctioneer work, which yeah. is also a huge hole that I like filling in my heart because I don't cost a lot. Nothing yeah. you do costs a lot. It, I mean, yeah, yeah. It's budgeted. It's about 85 bucks a head if you're having us come in for trainings. But um, to do auction work and find out that, you know, my my fee of $2,500 to do an event that the other guy was charging six to eight grand or occasionally 5% of the take. Think about yeah. that. 
Yeah, Someone yeah. brings in a half million dollars. That's a, that's like half a Tesla. Yeah. You know, I, I'd rather keep the money with the organization and be asked back a couple of times or referred yeah. out. So that's how I yeah. work. And that's, that's been a lot of my business over the last couple of months, especially as we've been nice. kind of crawling out of the, of the pandemic. Yeah. So huh. good stuff. Good stuff. Well, I think, you know, Brian, this has been awesome talking to you. I appreciate the time. I miss you. You're a dynamic guy. I don't think anyone <laughs> ever said that, but you have a, you have a. You know, I'm crazy you know, as hell. That's the thing. Fun. You're kind of wackadoo, but I think that's why we <laughs> like each other. Um, yeah. I, I really appreciate talking to you. It's been way too Yeah. Long. It's so great to have you on tonight, Brian. And, and thanks so much, everyone, for being here. Deb, uh, Mike, Timo, um, Joseph, it just everyone. Uh, thanks for being here. Thanks, Brian. Uh, okay. Brian Trendler, Laugh Tech. Reach out, contact with him, contact him, uh, and uh, get something scheduled, man. And you guys do virtual too, right? So you're across, all over the country. You're global. Absolutely. You're global. Absolutely. All right. Thank awesome. you so much. I appreciate it, man. You bet. Well, thanks everyone for being here. We're going to sign off for now, and we will be back again next week. Awesome. Take care. Yeah.